This video will demonstrate how to use serial communication on a Raspberry Pi to connect to a solar charge controller. The photovoltaic data will be transmitted wirelessly from the Pi using a Python web server REST API to web-enabled devices. My videos are fast-paced, but all the code, notes, updates, and more are available on my website. As always, there'll be a link placed in the video description. I wrote this simple React Native app to work for both iPhone and Android. The different screens show live solar charging data being transmitted wirelessly from an old Raspberry Pi in my backyard, which is running off a solar panel and a 12 volt battery. I can use the app anywhere that has cell coverage or Wi-Fi. In many of my previous videos, I've connected LCD and LED displays to the Pi to present sensor data and information. A mobile phone screen has much better resolution and has its own batteries, which is a big plus for solar. A phone or tablet makes a great Raspberry Pi display, and thanks to some great new development tools, it's relatively easy to code. Here's a maximum PowerPoint tracking, or MPPT solar charge controller. It converts the higher voltage DC output from a solar panel down to the lower voltage needed to charge batteries, and it does so in an efficient manner. Hooking it up is very intuitive. The positive and negative outputs from the solar panel connect to the corresponding terminals on the controller. A 12 volt battery is connected to the controller's battery terminals. An inline fuse should be placed within 15 centimeters of the battery's positive terminal. The controller has 12 volt DC load terminals, which can provide power to the Raspberry Pi as long as the step-down regulator is placed in line to lower the 12 volts down to 5 volts. This controller is a Tracer Model 1210RN rated for 10 amps. It's rebranded by multiple vendors such as EP Solar, SaneSonic, Renogy, etc. There's several different models with different amp ratings. One thing they all have in common is a port for an optional MT5 meter LCD display. Since they all use the same display, they all use the same communication protocol. Many charge controllers use RS-485 protocol but this one uses a serial interface with 3.3 volt TTL logic, which is ideal for the Pi. Also, a GitHub user named Steve created an excellent Python library and documented the serial pinout. The charge controller's remote meter, or RM port, uses an RJ45 jack, which takes a common computer network cable. The pins are 12 volts on pins 1 and 3, ground on pins 2, 4, 7, and 8, serial transmit TX is pin 5, and serial receive RX is pin 6. To talk to the Pi, we only need to connect the ground, TX, and RX. The RJ45 pin 4 is connected to a ground on the Pi. The TX pin 5 is connected to GPIO 15, which is RX, on the Pi. The RX pin 6 is connected to GPIO 14 on the Pi, which is TX. So transmit goes to receive, and receive goes to transmit. I'll make a custom serial cable using CAT6 wire and an RJ45 connector. Of course, you could just cut one end off of any network cable too. I'll stick with the standard 568B wiring colors, blue to pin 4, blue-white to pin 5, and green to pin 6. Please double check your wiring because accidentally connecting a 12 volt pin could damage the Pi. You could always use a meter to verify that the TX to ground and the RX to ground are around 3 volts. Now just insert the crimper and squeeze to crimp the wires and cut off the extra length. For the other side of the cable, I'll just use a female header that fits the 2.5mm GPIO pins on the Pi. Here are the charge controller terminals, plus and minus for the solar panel, plus and minus for the battery, and plus and minus for the load, and the RM serial port. An old Raspberry Pi Model A will be used because it doesn't consume very much electricity and it can easily handle the two tasks of serial communication and web serving. Here's the completed serial patch cable. I'll plug the network connector into the RM port on the controller. And on the other side, the 3-pin header goes to the Pi's ground, GPIO 14 TX, and GPIO 15 RX. That's all it takes for the serial wiring. Here's an inexpensive 3 amp 12 to 5 volt step down regulator. 12 volt input wires are connected to the controller's 12 volt load terminals, black to negative and red to positive. For this demo, I'm going to skip the regulator fuse, but I recommend using one to be safe. This regulator has a micro USB plug on the 5 volt output, so it plugs right into the Pi. The controller needs a battery to power the Pi when the sun sets. I'm using a 12 volt, 9 amp hour lead acid battery. 12 gauge MC4 connectors are used to connect the solar panel. These connectors are commonly found on solar panels. The negative one goes to the controller's solar panel minus terminal. The positive one goes to the solar panel plus terminal. I added some red tape to differentiate the wires because the negative one has a red ring that's a bit misleading. Finally, the battery cables. The black negative one is connected to the controller's battery minus terminal and then plugged into the negative terminal on the battery. The red positive wire is connected to the controller's battery positive terminal and then connected to the positive on the battery. 
Again, I'm skipping the battery fuse, but I do strongly recommend you use an inline fuse within 15 centimeters of the battery's positive terminal. Looks like the Pi is powering on. That's it for the wiring. On the Pi, open a terminal and make sure everything is up to date using sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. I also recommend you use a freshly wiped Pi with the latest version of Rasby and Jesse. Next, sudo rasby config is used to open the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. Select interfacing options, select serial, click no for would you like the login shell to be accessible over serial. This feature allows you to SSH into the Pi with a console cable from a computer using GPL pins 14 and 15. It needs to be disabled so it doesn't interfere. Then click yes for would you like the serial port hardware to be enabled, click OK, finish to exit, and yes to reboot. After rebooting, verify the serial interface with tail boot config text. The file should contain the uncommented line enable UART equals 1. Please note that this line could have performance issues on a Raspberry Pi with Bluetooth, such as the Pi 3. The Pi has two UARTs which stand for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. The first is UART 0 on port TTYAMA0. It's a high throughput, full featured serial port. It's mapped to GPIO pins 14 and 15 on non-Bluetooth Pis. However, on the Raspberry Pi 3 and 0W, it's appropriated for Bluetooth. The second UART 1 on port TTYSO is called the Mini UART. It's only for low throughput applications, and on Pis with Bluetooth, it's mapped to GPIO 14 and 15. One downside of many is that the baud rate is derived from the system clock. In order to ensure a constant baud rate, it's necessary to cap the core frequency to the lowest common minimum frequency. Therefore, on the Pi 3, when the boot config text file has enable UART equals 1, the core frequency is capped at 250 MHz. This can lower the Pi's performance, and you're still stuck with a low throughput port. The only other option that I'm aware of is to disable the Bluetooth and remap the header pins to use the full UART. This feature is called the pin crossbar. I'll include some notes on my website if anyone's interested. Again, this only applies to Pi's with built-in Bluetooth. So for serial applications, you're probably better off using an older Raspberry Pi. The Tracer library will handle all communication with the charge controller. It's designed for the same Sonic 1215RN, but it works fine with my EP Solar 1210. There's a Python library that works great with the Raspberry Pi, and it's very easy to use. On the Pi in a terminal, type cd tilde to ensure you're in the home directory. To download the library, type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash xxv slash tracer dot git. LS lists the download tracer folder. There's no need to install anything. The Python library can be imported directly from this folder. Run idle 2. The tracer library isn't currently Python 3 compatible, but it'd be an easy upgrade. I'll create a new file. I'll save it to the documents folder and call it solar test. From time, sleep is imported. From serial, serial is imported. Sys is imported and used to append the path of the tracer library to the Python path so it can be imported. Home Pi Tracer Python is the location. From tracer, tracer, tracer serial, and query command are imported. A port is created for serial port TTY AMA0. Baud rate is 9600 and a one second read timeout. The port input and output is flushed. A tracer is instantiated with hex ID 16. This appears to be the default ID. A tracer serial is instantiated and passed the tracer and the serial port. A query command is instantiated. An infinite while loop is enclosed in a try statement to catch errors. Another try statement is used just to catch serial errors. The tracer serial send command is used to transmit a query command to the charge controller. Data is received using the receive result command. Data contains 14 variables tracked by the charge controller related to the battery, charging, the load, and the solar panel. Except is used to catch two common serial errors, index error and I.O. error, such as if the TX and RX are reversed or unplugged. Any error is printed to the shell. The port is flushed, input and output, the program waits 4 seconds, and tries again. Upon successful receive, print displays the battery voltage from data.bat underscore voltage. Additionally, the solar panel voltage is printed along with the charging current in amps and the load current in amps, which in this case is how much electricity is being used by the Raspberry Pi. The loop repeats every 4 seconds. Except we'll catch a Control-C 
and make sure the serial port is closed when the program exits. I have a Renogy 50 watt solar panel set up outside. It's a clear day and the panel is getting plenty of sunlight. The MC4 connectors from the panel are plugged into their mates on the charge controller. The Raspberry Pi is on and everything is ready to go. The Python program is started and the data is displayed. The battery is at 14.2 volts, the solar panel is at 20.5 volts, and is charging the battery at 0.41 amps. The Pi is only using 0.12 amps. Now the Pi load dropped to 0.09 amps. So the battery should stay fully charged until the sun sets. I'm using a 9 amp hour battery which should easily provide power overnight. 9 amp hours divided by the higher load of 0.12 amps is 75 hours. With a safety factor of 2 that should keep the Pi running for over 37 hours without light. Next, the lightweight Python web framework called Flask will be used to create a REST API, which is a very simple web server that can be used to receive or send data to a program, a mobile app, a web page, or any device with web access. Flask comes pre-installed with the latest version of Raspbian and Jesse. It only takes a few lines of code, so to save time, I went ahead and modified the solar test program and renamed it Solar REST. At the top, Flask and JSONify are imported from Flask. A Flask app is instantiated. AppRoute is a decorator that is placed before a function. It tells the program that when someone browses to that web path, it should trigger the function. Solar is specified for the route. Get is set for the method, which indicates this route only answers to get requests and not to posts, puts, deletes, etc. Get data when fired will query the charge controller and receive the data. The data is returned using JSONify and converted to JSON format. Again, battery voltage, panel voltage, charging current, and load current are returned in response to web requests to the solar route. The same error checking occurs as in the previous program, but now it's returned in JSON format. A 503 error code is also returned to let the web browser or app know that something went wrong. Instead of an infinite loop, app run is called, which will start the REST API. I'll run the app. A REST API web server is now running locally on port 5000. The REST API can be tested using curl. Dash I is used to include the HTTP header. The local IP address is specified with port 5000 and the route is solar. 200 indicates that everything's okay. The content type is JSON. The response includes the data. Battery 14.17 volts, charging at 0.35 amps. The loads down to 0.07 amps and the solar panel is at 20.66 volts. Currently the web server is only running locally on the Pi. A free service called ngrok can be used to put the REST API on the public internet. Browse to ngrok.com. Normally you'd sign up, but I already have an account, so I'll click Login. Select Download. Scroll down to Linux Arm. Click Download. Now navigate to the Getting Started tab. Copy the ngrok auth token to the clipboard. This will provide secure HTTPS communication with the REST API on the Pi. In a terminal, type cd tilde to ensure you're in the home directory. Use make directory ngrok to create an ngrok folder. cd into the new folder. The ngrok zip file was downloaded to the downloads folder. Unzip tilde slash downloads slash ngrok stable linux arm dot zip. This unzips the ngrok program into the ngrok folder. Now paste the auth token command from the clipboard and click enter. This saves the auth token. This only needs to be done once unless you want to reissue a new token. Period slash ngrok http 5000. Wait, missing an N. Okay, this starts the ngrok service on port 5000. That's all it takes to put the REST API on the internet. I recommend you use the HTTPS address for better security. Select the URL and copy it to the clipboard. I'll open up a browser on a different computer and paste in the ngrok address. Don't forget to append the route, which is solar. The charge controller data is returned. This data is now publicly available anywhere with web access. And for the record, I recommend you research security best practices anytime you put a device on the public internet. Precautions should be taken to harden the pie against hacking. I enjoy developing software, but not so much writing code for the web. There's just an endless stream of overly complex frameworks, libraries, and tools. However, that being said, I'm a big fan of React. React's an open source JavaScript library created by Facebook to build interactive user interfaces. Facebook also provides React Native, which lets you build mobile apps that run on both Android and iOS using JavaScript. Another brilliant open source tool for mobile app development is Expo. It takes most of the complexity out of building mobile apps. With a few clicks, you can start coding immediately and see the results on your phone too.
Teaching React Native in Expo is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Instead, I'm just going to focus on demonstrating the JavaScript code that retrieves the charge controller data from the REST API. However, the app's full code is available on my GitHub site. Here's my React Native project. A lot of the folders and files were generated automatically by Expo. App state contains the application state. The variable data holds results returned from the REST API. The observable decorator is provided by MobX and will automatically update the app screens when new data arrives, if necessary. MobX is a simple state management library that is much easier than Redux. The method fetchData gets the data from the REST API. The MobX decorator action lets the program know that this method can change state. That just means that it can change variables that may require the UI to update. The JavaScript fetch command is passed to the URL address of the REST API. Method get indicates that this is a get request. A promise returns the response. If the response is OK, the JSON method is used to parse the data. Afterwards, the converted data is stored in the class's observable data variable, which automatically updates the screens if necessary. There is some error checking, and then a timer is used to call fetch again at a specified interval. From the Expo XDE desktop program, click Publish, and the Solar Tracking app is published to the internet. This address can be opened by the Expo app, which is free from Google Play and the Apple App Store. On an iPad, I open the Expo app. Now I'll paste in the Expo address, click Search, then tap to open the project. Looks like the solar panel is at 20.41 volts. I hope you found this video useful. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.